Hey guys, it's MJ, the student tech tree, and in this video, we're going to be stalking our examiners on LinkedIn. So what I've got is I've been reading through the actuarial course notes for the subject that we are busy studying, and I've come across a whole bunch of names. These are the people in the acknowledgement section. So very likely, these people here are going to be the examiners for the fellowship exam in finance for the South African exam. So what we're going to be doing is just be copying their names, typing them into LinkedIn, and seeing what happens. So yeah, let's, let's do this. So the first guy is called Lance. And I think it's this one, since it's the only Lance that pops up. Although he doesn't have a profile picture, which means he's not using LinkedIn that much. Um, went to Hilton College, that's a really cool school in South Africa. But other than that, he doesn't say too much on, on his one. Okay, let's see who the next person is. Namir, let's get him. And let's see what Namir, I think it's this one. 50, 50 shared connections. Director and Chief Financial Officer, Actuary, CFA. Oh, also into to this university. Um, yeah, this is what I want to do, is you can see the activity, see what, you know, what articles are they liking, um, and stuff like that. Also great to see is what companies that they're working for. So the sale group, I actually don't know the sale group, although sale provides debt and equity finance for mining projects. Now that's interesting, because in the actuarial course notes, it says you need to understand the finances of mines, and specifically mining rehabilitation funds. And there was a past paper question where you had to value a mine because the trustees of a pension fund wanted to buy the mine that wasn't working so well and you had to figure out whether they should do it or shouldn't do it. And it was quite a heavy question. It was for quite a lot of marks. So I'm probably betting my, yeah, I'd probably bet that, that this was the, the guy who set that exam question around the mine. So that is really cool. And then, yeah, it's always good to come and, you know, see what activity that they're doing. Is he only like, he's only like one thing, fund manager at Lorium. So yeah, it would be good to, to watch that um, type of thing. Let's see what other actuaries we have. I don't think all actuaries are using LinkedIn. Um, I think it's, yeah, I don't, I don't think everybody's got LinkedIn. Although, yeah, I think this is the one. We've got three connections in common. Um, also, University of Westfortestrand. Uh, so you can know that that is the best university for studying actuarial science anywhere in the world. Um, you both studied at University of Bits, uh, Channel Dynamics. Don't know that company. Uh, BSc Honors. And okay, yeah, it's also quite cool to come and see. You know, what are their skills? Strategic planning, business strategy, new business development. We can view the other ones. Um, Social media marketing, that is interesting. Um, might get an exam question around social media. Don't know how how that would fit in. Okay, nothing too too many clues over there. Uh, let's see, Mark. Let's see what Mark's profile is. Although on LinkedIn, don't they get like a message saying that I've been looking at them? I think they do. I think that, yeah, it comes as a notification. These are the people who are stalking you. So all these people are going to be knowing that I'm stalking them. Um, I think indices and valuations at JSC Limited sounds a little bit more than a technician at Telfo. So I think it is this mark here. Interesting that we don't have any, okay, University of Pretoria. So that's probably why we don't have it. Okay, this is interesting. So... In the past exam, there was a question, so the one written in November 2016, there was a big question on the JSE and the new can-do system. So the fact that there is a potential examiner who works at the JSE, that's the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, means that that is a potential exam question. His interests are ETFs. I think ETFs are going to pop up in the exam just because they haven't come up in any previous exams. And there is a lot of news around that. So that is very, this is good information. We're getting a lot of information off of Mark's one. So yeah, JSC has got some new indices that they've released. They've got the CAPS Wix, 
which just limits the market cap impact of the, the, the big shares like NASPERS. And that is, that's very interesting. So we need to remember JSE ETFs. Okay, let's see what we can learn from Darren. Okay, um, we've got 10 shared connections. So where did he study? CFA Cape Town area. Um, we've got 10 mutual connections. He's an equity analyst at Investec. Investec is a very high, yeah, Alan Gray as well. Those are very like the top, top notch. Old Mutual's the biggest, I think the biggest actuarial company. So got quite a, quite a cool, yeah, experience. Where did he study? He studied at Cape Town. He studied in Cape Town and valuations. Okay, in the, the past exam, there was a thing about a, an airport. We had to value an airport and whether a pension fund should buy it. So probably that was his, um, his question. Um, his interests, does he have, he likes yeah, the fund managers. So you can come here. I should actually be following these people. Hey, Alan Gray as well, Prudential and Coronation. Those are yeah, the big asset managers. Let's see what groups he's in. No, that doesn't give us too much. Yeah, it doesn't give us too much information. But okay, asset managers, that is a big topic in the exam. So interesting that yeah, he does work for, for them. Um, so that is, that is Darren. Uh, we've got two more. We've got two more. We've got Kyle. Let's see, let's see what we can learn off of Kyle's. Um, oh, this is one thing about LinkedIn is when there's like a lot of people with like the same name. Okay, I don't think creative marketing director is setting my exam. I don't think an engineering guy for the US Navy on a Hawaiian island is going to be setting my exam. Student at Michigan University. Okay, so I don't think we've, I don't think Kyle, Kyle's too cool for LinkedIn. Um, let's see the last one, Renee. Okay. Um, dum, dum, dum. Renee, there we got two shared connections, although we've also got this one here, customer service or fixed income analyst. I think the fixed income analyst is more likely to be our, our actuarial friend. Um, yeah, let's see Renee. Um, Avor Capital Markets, CFA. So you can see, I remember I made that video about, you know, should actually study the CFA route. We are seeing a lot of the guys in investment have gone on to get the, the CFA. But the fact that he's a fixed income analyst and dealer, he's been working there for one year, which means it's still a fresh job. We might be seeing a question around fixed income. Um, th those are like bonds, index linked bonds. Also bonds have hit quite a bit of turbulence this year with the whole downgrading and junk status and everyone going, oh, crazy, crazy. So that, that is quite, that is, yeah, that does give us some information. Uh, he's a qualified actuary, the faculty of actuary, so that's what the UK. Went to Stellenbosch, another very good university here in South Africa. Portfolio management, but their fixed income. That, that does give us some information. Um, I mean, if we click on, what happens when you go to one of these things on LinkedIn? Um, six people from your school were hired here. I have 56 employees, that's not too bad. Does it tell you like who the people are? Um, we are an independent equity research firm in South Africa that provides innovative and insightful research on selected JSE listed companies. No, wait, wait, this is not, oh no, if they're doing on equity, why did he say fixed income? They show more? Oh, derivatives and fixed income. Okay, so he's part of that. Ooh, and it's part of the derivatives. Der they love asking about derivatives. Derivatives always comes up in in every exam. Corporate finance, trade and execution, it's in Santon, and, and then you're, I mean, like another thing that you can do is you can then go to these, let's open this in a new tab. You can then go to their websites and read their blogs. So I read through the Colorfield blogs, remember I made that video earlier, and there were some really 
great stuff. So yeah, you want to go insights, um, articles, and just read this stuff. This stuff is really, this is really good stuff to read. Um, if you're bored, no, it's good. It's good studying to to go through here. Listed property. That is actually another topic that I think might pop up in the exam because the JSE has change the indices around listed property so it is very topical as well so that's what you do want to do for the exam you want to know what's happening in the world because they do tend to ask on questions that are you know relevant and, and newsworthy but there we go i mean guys feel free to to add me on linkedin um i'll put a little link of my profile thing so you can just click on it and then you can add me and then you can always i think see who's in my connection you can see other actories you can stalk them and but you must be very careful i think i think you can you know the internet is a, a bit of a thief of time so you can get a little bit too in depth in linkedin and then you're like oh my gosh i've wasted an entire hour just scrolling through this random news feed and reading weird and wonderful articles but i think there we go we've we've learned some important stuff i think the jsc I am, it's just, yeah, the last year's exam paper asked about the JSE, so I don't know if they're going to repeat that topic again, especially when there are so many topics, um, but the fact that it has been in the news a lot and we do have an examiner that works for it, it does make a lot of sense just to get a good grips and understanding of it anyway. But anyway, thanks guys so much for watching this video, and feel free to ask a question in the comment section below, and to, yeah. Add me, add me to your LinkedIn network. Thanks, guys. Cheers.